It's not over the I just reduce the Okay, this one. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Manisha? I think it's okay. It's okay. Are we yes, on the yes. okay? Okay, if uh, during the presentation, if you have any query, you can ask me uh, through through the by unmuting and you can ask me the question okay so today we're going to give a presentation of care of endotracheal and tracheostomy tube so all of you know uh i think if you have uh, you are posted in icu or if posted in emergency or any department where there is a uh, frequent cases which have endo endotracheal intubation or tracheostomy tube intubation so you will know more about this topic so first we'll discuss care of patient on endotracheal tube. So what is endotracheal intubation? So endotracheal intubation is a medical procedure. Okay. Endotracheal intubation is a medical procedure in which a flexible tube is placed into the open pipe, that is the trachea, through the mouth or nose, Okay, the tube is then connected with a vent, uh, mechanical ventilator to assist with breathing. So what are the... Can I keep this one? So what are the indications? First is respiratory failure. So first is respiratory failure. So what kind of respiratory failure? Like if a patient is hypoxic or hypercapnic, or a patient is uh, having a, a pulmonary edema. So these are kind of respiratory failure. And next is cardiac insufficiency, like patient is out cardiac arrest or shock, and also like neurological dysfunction, like there is loss of consciousness or any changes in the GCS of the patient might need the endotracheal intubation. And also any alteration in the ABG result, like the patient have uh, acidosis. It can be respiratory or metabolic, okay? And if the patient is under the following condition, like multiple trauma and it's shock, multi-organ failure, such as an septicemia, okay, drug overdose, a long period of surgery, like in case of surgery, if the patient require a very long period of surgery, we can intubate the patient. And in case of inhalation injury, like in case of smoke inhalation or any other uh, poisonous gases. So these are the indications. So first we'll discuss the nursing role during insertion of the endotracheal tube. So whenever a patient is admitted to you and you see that there are all these indications are there, all these indications are there for intubation. So what you should do first, first and foremost, you should oxygenate the patient using a bag and mask uh, ventilation, okay? Then after that, you connect the patient to a monitor to check for the vital signs, the SpO2 of the patient. And then after that, you bring the emergency card near the bedside. Okay, so whenever you are planning to intubate the patient, obviously the emergency card should be next to the patient and there should be IV access. So why do we need this IV access? Can anyone tell me? You can write down in the chat box. I'll read it. I'll read out from there. Why do we need IV access? If you want to intubate a patient, why do we need IV access? Sedation, somebody has written sedations, a tapering sedative dose, fluid resuscitation. Yes, uh, IV fluid, res uh, yes. IV fluid res resuscitation. Then obviously we have to give anesthetic drugs, okay? Because we're going to intubate the patient and the patient will be restless, right? So we have to anesthetize the patient. We can give muscle relaxant muscle or any uh, drugs which can save the patient life, okay? Then next we have to position the bed and the patient. So how we position the bed and the patient? Many of them mentioned drug uh, administration sedations for the previous questions. Yes, yes, okay. Next, we'll come to the positioning of the bed and the patient. So, how we position the bed? Supine. Many of them. Yes, supine and what? 
What else? Supine, flat, rose positions. Oh, you know? Yes. Okay. Position yes. mainly we use supine position and also head tilt. Yes. Mainly when we intubate the patient, mainly we have to put the patient at the head end of the bed. Okay. And head end, and you should remove the head end, uh, the uh, rails, okay, the railings that is at the head end, we should remove it, and the patient should be kept at the head end, and we have to do the health tip, okay, but in case, if the patient is having any cervical injury, so we do the jaw thrust method, okay, and also the position of the bed, it should be at the level of the chest of the physician who is going to intubate the patient. So if the if the uh, physician is quite tall, so you have to position the bed according to the, so that the uh, doctor or whoever is going to intubate the patient, he will be able to visualize the airway, okay? Then we have to prepare the laryngoscope and the blade. We have to select the size, okay? We have to check whether the laryngoscope is working or not beforehand, okay? And after that, we inflate the ET tube cuff. So how do we inflate the ET tube cuff? How do we inflate the cuff? Using syringe. Yes, using syringe. syringe and how syringe. much? Uh, how much ml? What should we use? Uh, water or air or what? Air. Yes. 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 We have to use a syringe, and mainly we use five ml of air. Okay. Uh. uh sorry. Is uh. Yeah, 20 to 30 cent. I don't know. We have to use 10 ml, yes, 5 ml of air, okay, into the ET cuff. So after that, we fix the tube by holding, okay, after, into, uh, after inflating the ET cuff, we have to fix the tube by holding, okay. Uh, we have to hold the tube tightly, and after that, we have to Disconnect the back and mass, and we have to connect the back and uh, the abu back through the ET tube. Okay, and we have to continue the back and mass ventilation after verifying the placement. So, how do we verify the placement of the ET tube? How do we verify the placement of yes by auscultation? Yes, X ray is not. We cannot do in the emergency, uh, like when you intubate the patient, we cannot do the x-ray. Okay, later on, we can do the x-ray. But immediately, by auscultation, by hearing the breath sounds. We can do with capnography also, but okay, that can be done later, okay? And mainly, it's just by the passage of air into the airway, okay? By auscultation, okay? We have to hear the air entry, and also we have to look, listen, Okay, we have to look, we have to look for the rise in the chest, okay? When there is, when you're giving back and mass ventilation, we have to look for the rise in the chest whenever you give air into the lungs, okay? And also if the, if you have clear, you have did, done the auscultation, you have seen that there is rise in the chest, okay? Suppose there's rise in the abdomen, it means that the ET tube has gone into the esophagus. Okay. It means that the ET tube has gone into the esophagus if there is rice in the abdomen. Okay. So we have to verify for the placement. And after verifying, then we have to secure the tube by, as you can see in this picture, okay. The first picture we, uh, we tie or we use a uh, tape to fix it in the side of the mouth. And after that, Okay, we use a micro pore, but it won't be uh, too. It won't be. It will come out. Okay, if we use a micro pore, okay, we use mainly a dinoplast. Okay, dinoplast, or we can use a ba roller bandage. Okay, and also after that, we attach the uh, ET tube to a mechanical ventilation. After that, we do the ABG to see for the blood gases and also the chest x-ray to confirm the placement and then we do the documentation. So what should, documentation should we do? Okay, what documentation should we do? 
after please after ET tube intubation. Vitals it mentions. Yes, vitals then. Size of ET tubes. Yes. Size of ET tubes. Sedations used. Okay. So what should the document? First, we use we have to document who has intubated, assisted, and what care was provided, like what drugs or whatever nursing care you have given, like suctioning or whatever uh, medication and suctioning and nursing care, whatever is uh, done at the time of intubation, then the time and date, then the ET size, okay? And then we see the length at which the ET tube is inserted. This is very, very important, okay? Okay, because sometimes if a patient, if the leg is too less or too more, it means that the tube has dislodged. Okay, then the drugs given, then the cuff pressure. Okay, we have to measure the cuff pressure through the manometer, then the ventilator settings which you have set, and also the vital sites and the SpO2 of the patient. So these are the things you should document. So nursing care for a patient who has already have an ET tube. So what are the nursing care you can do? We have to ensure indicated oxygen amount is provided, assess the respiratory status every two hourly or, or as indicated, check for respiratory sound, leakage, and any secretion, then adequate humidification should be provided, and suction should be done every two to three hourly or when indicated. It can be closed or open, okay? And assess oral and uh, nasal mucosa for redness, bleeding, and irritation, change the position of the patient every too early to facilitate drainage and also ensure the ET placement by making, uh, by marking and comparing to the previous placement and monitor the cuff pressure in every shift to maintain, uh, and maintain a pressure of at least 20 to 30 centimeter of water to provide adequate seal and, complicate, uh, and reduce complications. So you can see here, okay? So all of you know what this is? This is an open suction, okay, the first diagram, okay? Where you take out the ventilated tubings and insert a sterile suction catheter into the ET tube for suctioning. And this other one, as you can see in this uh, picture, it is a closed suction method where you can use a clean method, uh, you have, you, you can wear a clean gloves and you don't need to disconnect the uh, ventilator, this ventilator circuit to do the suctioning, okay? So all of you know how to uh, operate the open and closed suction. Yes, some of them they have mentioned yes. Okay. Hemanta have said yes, Jonu yes. Just some of them they have mentioned just open section. Okay. So uh open section. So whenever you use what are the benefits okay for using a closed suction? Can you say some of the benefits? Do you think which one is more better, closed or open? Close infection. Oh, close. Okay. So why do you think it is more important? Close. Prevent infection. Okay, like mainly like because we're discussing mostly about COVID. Okay, because what will happen if you open, you do an open suction, there will be spread of infection. The patient will cough and all the secretion will fall on your gloves, your mask, your, uh, your gown or whatever you're wearing. Okay, so but in case of a closed suction, if you do a closed suction, you won't have the patient, if he cough also, it won't fall on your hands, okay, or on your clothes. Okay, and also one more thing, if you do an open suction, so what will happen? You have to remove the ventilator circuit, right? So whenever you remove a ventilator circuit, what will happen? The patient won't get the tidal volume, the ventilator support, okay? So the patient, sometimes the alveoli or the lungs might collapse, right? So, but in case of a closed suction, whenever you do a suctioning, you don't need to take out the ventilator circuit and on 
Because of that, the patient will get the required amount of oxygen, the required amount of tidal volume, the pressure support from the ventilator, and it will prevent the collapse of the alveoli, okay? So this is why mainly we prefer closed suction over uh, open suction, okay? We'll show you the uh, closed suction later, later on. Okay, so next, a nursing care which we can do is Okay, then we have to move the oral ET tube to the opposite side of the mouth to prevent any irritation of the oral mucosa. So if possible, we have to, uh, uh, from one side of the mouth, we have to put to the other side of the mouth if you see that it has caused any irritation at that area of the mouth. Okay, we have to provide oral care to the patient at least in every shift or whenever uh, required with an oral antiseptic or an antibacterial solution. We can also use a bite block or you can say an airway, okay, to prevent the patient from biting the tube if necessary. Then communicate with the patient using a whiteboard or a communication board. So whenever a patient, sometimes an intubated patient also can communicate with you if he is able to, okay. So at that time, you can give a patient a, either a yes or no questions. Or if he is able to write, you can also give a patient a white uh, a white board and a pen or a white paper for him to communicate with him or her to communicate with you. Okay, then the ET strap should be changed only when the patient is calm or after a sedation. So whenever you are planning, suppose the ET strap are too dirty and you want to change it. So whenever you want to change it, you have to see that the patient is not restless. He is calm and he is under or he is under a sedation, okay? If there is high, if there is high chance that the patient will self-extubate, the hands of the patient should be restrained, okay? And whenever we talk about restraining a patient, we have to always take the consent from the relative, okay? And if suppose the patient is too restless and you are only restrained, the patient, okay? So you have to, after the restrained patient, you have to go and tell the relative that we have restrained this patient because of the it is very necessary as he has chance of self-extubation, uh, self okay? If the patient require prolonged ventilator support, tracheostomy tube should be inserted. So if a patient require ventilator support for a long time, it can be two weeks, months, or uh, three months, or years, okay? We have to always plan to change that uh, ET tube to a tracheostomy tube, okay? So why, why do we need that? Can anyone say why do we need to change it? Why do we need to change from an ET tube to a tracheostomy tube? That is my question. You can write down in chat box. Please write down your response in chat box. Weaning. Yes, to prevent trauma, weaning. Oral hygiene, okay. Oral hygiene, yes. So what, suppose, suppose for you, if you open your mouth for a long time, what will happen? For all of us, like normal people, if we open our mouth for a long time, what will happen? There'll be collection of saliva, right? For a patient also, if he open his mouth for a long time, he will have collection of saliva in his throat. And because of that, there is high chance for aspiration and he can develop ventilator a ventilator associated pneumonia okay which is more uh, dangerous right so because of that to prevent that and to prevent like to maintain the oral hygiene so that's why if he require for a long time we usually change it to the tracheostomy tube okay okay so next, nutritional consideration. Oral feed is contra contraindicated. Oral feed is contraindicated. Enteral feeding is given using a nasogastric or a nasodudinal tube, as you can see in this picture. Okay, it's a nasogastric tube is inserted into the stomach. And then the patient, uh, place the patient in high fowler's position and check the placement of feeding tube before feeding to avoid any aspiration. And also we have to perform suctioning before giving the feed to the Patient. So this is how you give a feeding to a ET intubated patient, ET intubated patient. So we cannot give oral feed. It's completely contraindicated for such kinds of patient. Okay. 
So you can also give, as you can see in this diagram, a nasogastric tube feeding by continuous uh, control pump. You can also use a pump, okay? As you can just see this picture, the feeding is uh, inserted into this bag and it is connected to the pump, okay? And this, through this pump, the feeding is given to the patient. So with this pump, like usually we give it through a 50 cc syringe, right? So at that time, the feed will go once, like just in five, 10 minutes, the feeding will be finished. But using this pump, that same amount of feeding can give for at least 30, like 30 minutes to even one, two hours, okay? We can give the same wow. feeding. So this will prevent any stomach discomfort for the patient, prevent any distension to the patient, okay? So that, will, that is the benefit of this continuous feeding pump. So next, Okay, so next extubation of patient with ET tube. So obviously before we extubate the patient, we have to do regular assessment and trial. So trials as in we have to trial, try weaning, okay? If the patient is successful in weaning, then we can plan for extubation. And what do we do when we are extubating the patient? First, we have to suction prior to extubation, then intubation and emergency card should be kept ready. So why do we keep the intubation and the emergency card ready? Because anytime when you extubate the patient, the patient again might collapse. So it's better to have the card ready, okay? Then after uh, that, then oxygen mask should be also kept ready after extubation. The patient is asked to inhale uh, deeply before removing, okay? So why do we ask the patient to inhale deeply before removing? So this also will prevent the patient from aspirating, okay? Then once the ET tube is deflated, the ties are removed and the ET tube is taken out. Encourage the patient to cough during removal and provide oxygenation using a mask, face mask and monitor the vital signs and the uh, vital signs of the patient. And after that, we have to document the procedure. So this is how you extubate a patient. So uh, I hope all of you have understand how to take care for the patient with a ET tube. So now the next topic is we'll learn about the nursing care for a patient with tracheostomy tube. So, uh, So definition of tracheostomy. Tracheostomy is the surgical formation of an opening into the trachea through the neck, especially to the allow to allow the passage of air. As you can see in this picture, okay, a tube is inserted through the trach uh, through the neck into the trachea. Okay. So what is tracheostomy care? It is the basic minimal care, usually consisting of cleaning or changing the inner cannula, caring of the stoma, and suctioning at least three times a day. Each uh, bedside should be equipped with a functional suction, a suctioning system, an oxygen source, a manual resuscitation bag, and a complete tracheostomy kit, which should accompany the patient wherever the patient go in the hospital. So what are the indications for tracheostomy? So what I said before, right, to facilitate, uh, facilitate prolonged mechanical ventilation and, uh, sorry, the indication for tra tracheostomy is if the patient requires prolonged mechanical ventilation and there is lack of weaning, okay, the patient cannot be weaned from the ventilator and to bypass any upper airway obstruction like sleep apnea, if there is any tumors or any inflammation in the upper airway, okay, to maintain the pattern airway in severe head and neck injury or surgery, any airway an anomalies, okay, like any uh, like burn injury of the upper way or any uh, tumors, okay? And to remove any secretions. If the patient has so much of secretion, we can also do the tracheostomy. And if the patient have history of frequent 
aspiration, then we can change from ET tube to tracheostomy tube, okay? So what are the types of tracheostomy? So first is surgical tracheostomy. I think all of you know what is surgical tracheostomy, right? So all of you know what is surgical tracheostomy? I hope all of you have seen a surgical tracheostomy, right? Can you answer the question? Okay. So any one of you have seen a percutaneous tracheostomy? What about percutaneous tracheostomy? Okay. Okay. So in surgical tracheostomy, uh, the it is a surgical procedure. Okay, where a incision is made into the third between the third and fourth tracheal ring, and a tube is inserted. Okay, and but in percutaneous tracheostomy, we only need, as you can see in this uh, diagram, we only need a needle and also guide wire, okay? Guide wire and also dilators, okay? Uh, like, have you seen insertion of... Uh... Have you seen insertion of CVP, uh, CVP, CVP? CVP insertion, right? If you have seen a CVP insertion, they use a syringe and a needle, okay, to okay. Have you seen in CVP insertion? Laura mentioned yes. Okay, I can see that. So, like in percutaneous, uh, also it's same like CVP. We insert a needle and we localize the trachea and through that we can insert, insert a guide wire and through the guide wire we can insert the dilators okay the different dilators and once it has been dilated we can insert a tracheostomy tube okay so what are the types of tracheostomy tube one is cuff and one is uncuff as you can see in this a diagram, this is a cuff tracheostomy tube, and this is an uncuff tracheostomy tube. So mainly uncuff we use for pediatric patient, okay? And one, uh, the other types are fenestrated and non-fenestrated. Fenestrated tube is a tube which has a hole, a TT tube which has a hole above the, uh, inside the tracheostomy tube, okay? And non-fenestrated is without the hole. So we also have a single lumen and double lumen kind of, tracheostomy tube. So you can see here, this is a double lumen tracheostomy tube. And a single lumen, you only have only one uh, tube is present, okay? And types of tracheostomy tube, according to the material, we have also have uh, metal, silicon, and PVC, okay? Polyvinyl chloride. So these are the types of tracheostomy tube. And the tracheostomy tube size, as you can see in this diagram, and mainly for adult, we use seven size, 7.5 or 8 size, okay? These are the uh, tube size which we use for adult. And the complications for tracheostomy are mainly infections, okay? It can lead to any infection uh, to the site. It can lead uh, bleeding also. Why is the main cause of bleeding in tracheostomy? What is the main cause of bleeding in tracheostomy? Yes, frequent suctioning. So whenever there is secretion, we do the suctioning, right? So whenever we do frequent suctioning, we are uh, putting an external object into the trachea. So that can lead, to, uh, if we do frequent suctioning, it can lead to bleeding, okay? And next is stenosis, that is narrowing of the uh, trachea. Tracheal malaysia, that is the collapse of the tracheal uh, windpipe, okay? And skin breakdown, as you can see in this picture, okay? The skin will be breakdown because of infection, okay? And tracheoesophageal fistula, as you can see here, there is the picture. There is a 
fistula that is formed from the trachea into the esophagus, okay, because of the constant pressure from the cuff. And then aspiration, okay, aspiration also is a complication of tracheostomy and scarring. So these are the main complications for tracheostomy. So what are the tracheostomy emergencies? So these emergency, so tracheostomy emergency are managed more effectively when all necessary supplies are readily available at the bedside. So in these kind of uh, emergency, you have to have an emergency trolley with all the equipments ready, okay? One is hemorrhage. So hemorrhage is mainly caused if you have injured any arteries in the trachea, okay? It'll lead to severe bleeding from the tracheostomy site. And then tube dislodgement and loss of airway. So the tube, if uh, it is too loose, it can be dislodged and it can go into the esophagus or it, through the any fistula, if there is presence of any fistula, it can go to the esophagus and will lead to lack of uh, ventilation to the airway, okay? And then last is tube obstruction, because why do it lead to tube obstruction? Because of too much presence of secretion, so the tube might get blocked. So these are the emergency where you have to have the emergency tro trolley present and you have to change the tube, okay? So what are the nursing care for a tracheostomy patient? So first is nursing assessment. So you have to do a thorough assessment, should be done every shift, and it should be observed, observe the patient for any sign of hypoxia, infection, or pain, and observe for any redness, any purulent drainage, and abnormal bleeding, then assess for connection of the tracheostomy tube with the ventilator circuit. Then we have to auscultate for the breath sounds. And also we have to ensure emergency equipments are at patient's bedside and inquire when it is performed, the type and the tube size. So next is oral care. Okay, so it should be done once every shift or every eight hourly, okay? Or you can also, uh, uh, like morning, evening shift, right? So you can do morning time, evening time, and night shift, okay? So com commonly used solution is chlorhexidine mouthwash. And we have to, uh, it's mainly like nowadays we use a toothbrush, okay? Which is mainly indicated as you can see in this picture, okay? This is a toothbrush, which is used for oral care for intubated patient. And we can connect the end to a suction machine, okay? And through this top end, there is a, a hole, okay? While doing the oral care, we can do the suctioning at the same time so that the whatever solution we have used won't go into the trachea, okay? Then brushing the teeth, the gums, and tongue with a soft pediatric. If suppose you don't have uh, this kind of uh, toothbrush who is, uh, which is facilitated with uh, suctioning, you can use a pediatric toothbrush uh, and also it should be soft, okay? And while doing it, this uh, kind of, when we use a pediatric toothbrush, we have to also be ready with the suction catheter at the same time. So whenever you do the brushing with the uh, toothbrush, at the same time, from your other hand, you can do the suctioning with, uh, with the suction machine, okay? And we have to moisten the oral mucosa and the lips by using any vac uh, Vaseline or any lip balm, okay? So you can see in this picture, okay, giving a, giving oral care with the toothbrush. And here we have to connect the toothbrush with a, uh, with a suction machine, okay? And we can give the uh, oral care, okay? And the suction is on at the same time. So we can do the suction at the same time and we can do the oral care at the same time, okay? So anyone of you, of you have given oral care to intubated patient with a toothbrush? Can you give the answer? Okay. So these things are new, new things, okay, which you can learn. Okay. So mostly we use a uh, gauze piece, okay, which is like, we can use the gauze piece also, but whenever you use with a gauze piece also, you have to cover the artery forcep or whatever forcep that you are using, you have to cover all the sides of the forcep properly so that the tip of the forcep won't injure the uh, patient mouth, 
Okay. So next we'll come to providing humidification. So the natural warming, humidification and filtering of inhaled air is lost. Obviously, all, all, all of you know that we, when we take in our air from the environment, it goes through our nose, through our pharynx, larynx. Okay, so naturally the air is warm inside our body and it is humidified. But in the case of patient is on a tracheostomy tube, obviously there is no natural warming process, okay? And humidification process. So we have to provide adequate humidification to the patient. So adequ adequate humidification will keep secretion thins and then humidifier and nebulizer may be used with or independent of a mechanical ventilation. So these are the types of humidification which is mainly used. That is heat humidification in this, this first picture. And then uh, HME, uh, that is heat and moisture exchanger and the stoma protector. So which one of these do you, uh, do you mostly used out of these three? Can you give the answer? HME, okay. Do you use a heat modification, uh, humidification? Okay, so mostly they use HME, okay. So uh, HME, HME filter, okay, how does it work? It works by the patient actively. So it is an active humidifier, okay? So the patient himself, when he expires, it will trap the moisture from the patient when he expires and will humidify the ventilation, okay? But in case of H, uh, this heat humidification, the temperature is set, okay? There is a sterile water that is distilled water which is being put inside and this will be set on a heater and the temperature will be set, okay? It will be set uh, almost the same as the body temperature, okay? And this will heat the water and this will go through the ventilator circuit and will heat the ventilator or, or the, it will heat and moisten the air, okay? So this is called as a passive humidification. So these are about humidification, then mobilizing secretion. So how do we mobilize secretion? Mainly by frequent repositioning, deep breathing exercises, coughing exercises, chest physiotherapy, as you can see here, cupping and vibration is mainly used. Then postural drainage, we can change the pos uh, posture of the patient. We can put the patient in prone lateral position, okay? Right lateral, left lateral position too, and also Paula's position to maintain the airway and to provide drainage of the secretion okay then oral and parenteral hydration so we can give orally also and parentally also we can give supplemental humidification like i've said right heat uh, humidification can be given and even nebulization also act as a humidification okay then ventilator tubings will need frequent drainage so sometimes after exhalation the moisture will be trapped and it will be uh, collect in the ventilator circuit so that uh, water should be drained out so next is suctioning. So the indication for suctioning are mainly dyspnea, uh, noisy breathing, cyanosis, clampy skin, agitation, pupus secretion, low SpO2, increased peep, uh, inspiratory pressure. And you should assess every two hourly for the need of suctioning and should be done every shift before giving any feeds and when there is increase in secretion. So these are the necessary things about uh, suctioning. So uh, when you are doing the suctioning, so the formula for determine the suction catheter is mainly size of the tracheid tube divided by two into three, okay? Suppose the size of the tracheid tube is eight. So divide by two, it'll be four and into three, it'll be 12. So the suction catheter size is 12, okay? Then hyper oxygenate the patient before suction. So whenever you are planning to suction the patient, always before suctioning, we have to give 100% FiO2 to the patient and we have to insert the catheter till the point of resistance okay and once you have reached the points of resistance you cannot insert the catheter anymore you have to withdraw at least one to two centimeter and after that then you on the suction okay and suctioning should be done within 10, uh, 10 seconds because once you have done the suctioning the patient won't get any air in the lungs so we have to finish it within 10 seconds and also we have to use suction pressure between 80 to 120 mm of mercury, okay? We have to discontinue if the heart rate drops by 20 or increase by 40 
or it produces any arrhythmias or the SpO2 drops below 90%. Okay, so once it drops below 90%, we have to connect the patient back to the ventilator. Then we have, after doing the tracheal suction, we have to do the suction of the mouth. So how to maintain the inner cannula? So if suppose a patient have a double lumen uh, tracheostomy tube, so we have to do the inspection every three uh, times a day if there is any blockage, then disposal of inner uh, cannula should be, suppose it is a disposable inner cannula, so that disposable one should be thrown off. If it is non-disposable, the inner cannula should be washed properly with normal saline and then reattach, okay? So how to change the tracheostomy tube? So tracheostomy tube should be changed every one to four weeks or when the tube is blocked. Should be done using a sterile technique and two person is needed for track tubes changing, okay? So any one of you have changed? Any one of you have changed the tracheostomy tube for any patient? So whenever you change a tracheostomy tube, you have to know the procedure, okay? You cannot just change. If suppose uh, you are not, uh, you don't know how to change, please don't change the tracheostomy tube, okay? And whenever you change the tracheostomy tube, also it should be done with two person. And uh, as you can see in this picture, okay, when we insert the tracheostomy tube, okay, it should be inserted. It should, you first, you have to lubricate the tracheostomy, uh, the cuff, okay? You have to lubricate the cuff and you, ca you cannot insert it uh, directly. You cannot insert it directly just by just by inserting it like that. Okay, first you have to go from the side. Can you see this? This is tracheostomy. First, we have to go from the side, and once you have entered into the trachea, you have to change it. Okay, suppose this is a tracheostomy tube. Okay, uh, the tracheostomy, and you have to insert it from the side. And once you have reached the uh, the middle part of the tracheostomy, have entered, then you have to change it, and then the whole of the tracheostomy should be entered inside. Okay, that is how you insert the tracheostomy tube. Then changing of tracheostomy types. Types should not be changed within the first 24 hours of the new tracheostomy tube. So whenever a patient has a new tracheostomy, within the first 24 hours, the types should not be changed and should be performed by a two people uh, job. And the types should be a twill tape or a, vel uh, or a Velcro tape. And one or two fingers should easily slip between the ties and the necks and the neck for proper fit. So why do we need that? So if it is a, uh, so why do we need at least one or two fingers should easily slip into the thighs? Why do we need that? Suppose between the thighs there, you can fit four fingers. It means it is too loose, okay? And suppose you cannot even fit one finger. What does that mean? Prevent tightness. Yes, to avoid skin irritation. And what else? What what is what is the major artery that goes to your head? What is the major artery that goes to your head? The supply blood supply to your head? Yes. So if it is too tight, what will happen? What will happen? It'll avoid. It will prevent the blood supply to the brain. Okay. So that's why it, it should not be too. Type, okay. So the carotid, yes, the carotid artery that supplies to your brain. So in, in order to prevent constriction to that artery, so we don't give it too tight and also to prevent skin irritation, okay? And it will be comfortable for the patient also.
So a tracheostomy side care. So it should be done at least once per shift and it promotes skin integrity and prevent infection. We have to clean the stoma with a Q-tip or a gauze, moisten with NS and pat it dry. Topical ointment should be applied if only if the stoma is infected and the topical ointment also should be prescribed by the doctor, okay? Then apply a split dressing when it is done. Then you should change the wet dressing immediately. So whenever you see that the uh, dressing uh, around the tracheostomy is wet, uh, because of secretion so we have to change it immediately and we have to maintain this uh, the dressing should always be dry okay so nutrition and communication so enteral and parenteral feeding can be given to a patient so we can give the patient feeding through orally orally also and we can give it through ng tube or nd tube also to a patient okay so patient should be able to swallow before starting the oral feed. So how do we check whether the patient is able to swallow or not? How do we know? Can you give the answers? Can you give the answer how to check whether patient is able to swallow or not? Yeah, let's... Okay. Check for consciousness. They have mentioned. Check for consciousness. Yes. See, whenever you want to start a, you want to start the oral feed for a tracheostomy patient. Obviously, the patient has to be conscious. He has to be able to follow your directions. Okay. So how do we check? We can give a sip of water, just like one sip of water, and you can ask the patient to swallow it. If the patient is able to swallow it, it means his swallowing reflex is present. But suppose immediately after giving the sip of water, he starts to cough up, it means that his swallowing reflex is, uh, is not there. So please don't start the feeding at... Uh, Okay, so don't start the feeding, okay? If it does, swallowing the reflex is not there. Then the cuff pressure should always be inflated if the patient is taking food. So whenever a patient is taking food, orally, she should always inflate the cuff. And also you can inflate the cuff if patient is on NG or ND tube. And suctioning should be done prior to the meals because it will help the patient. And for communication, okay? A writing pad or a yes or no system is... Uh, you can give to the patient, okay? So you can see here in this diagram. So a writing pad, like this communication board can be given, like personal hygiene, uh, then hearing and sight, then pain scale, okay? So uh, can you answer me? Does a patient with a tracheostomy, can he speak? Can he speak for himself? Yes, no, yes, no. So majority of you are saying no, okay? But a patient, suppose the patient is conscious and he's able to understand and like he'll able to uh, do whatever you are saying. So a patient with a tracheostomy tube, he can speak. But whenever you want a patient to speak or to practice spe speaking, he, he or she should always have the cuff deflated. Okay, and his tracheostomy tube also, he has to cover the tracheostomy tube. Okay, he has to cover, this is a tracheostomy tube, right? So he has to cover the tracheostomy tube and the cuff should be deflated and he can speak at that time, okay? Because of the vibration of the vocal cord. Okay, because of vibration of the vocal cord, he can speak. But the only thing is, his speak, his speech when he has a tracheostomy, it won't be the same like before. Okay, it'll be some hoarseness will be there, but he will be able to speak. Okay. So uh, measuring of the cuff, okay, cuff pressure. So should be uh, done every shift and cuff pressure should be maintained from 20 to 25 centimeter of uh, water. As you can see, this is a manometer and this is to, pressure, uh, to measure the cuff pressure, okay? If there is per uh, persistent leak, <laughs> persistent leak will be manifested by uh, audible noises and lead to and loss of return volume with the ventilation. If the cuff pressure requires more air to seal, the pilot volume may be in ineffective or it can it has burst, okay? 
or the tract tube may be too small, or maybe the, the patient has developed tracheomalacia. As I've already said, right, tracheomalacia is the collapse of the windpipe. Okay, so these are the uh, main thing you should do while measuring the cuff pressure. And just remember, for measuring the cuff pressure, it should not be too tight as it can cause irritation of the tracheal uh, mucosa or it, it should not be too loose, okay? So decanalation. So after weaning from the ventilator, it should be done after weaning from the ventilator and after a transition process of intermittent trial. So you always have to have a trial of weaning so that the patient can be decanalated. The track tube is capped for a period of time until the patient can tolerate it for 24 hours. So. Uh, when you are saying cap, okay, so it means that the tracheostomy tube should be blocked, okay, and the cuff should be deflated. Suppose he's able to take breath through his nose, it means the patient can be decannulated. These are the trials. Then after decannulation, an occlusive dressing should be placed over the stomach. So as you can see, uh, see in this diagram, once the tract tube is deflated, a uh, occlusive dressing like this is placed over the stomach, okay? Apply uh, gentle pressure over the stomach, uh, stomach dressing when coughing or speaking. So, any questions? I don't tend to write down in the chat box. I'm coming here. Okay. So, these are some questionnaires uh, that I've prepared. Can you just uh, see? The first track tube should be changed by a physician. Okay, so this also is, uh, okay, I, I forgot to say. Always the first tracheostomy tube, like I've said here, right? First tracheostomy tube should always be changed by a physician. It should not be changed by you. But if it is a second or third or fourth and the uh, patient uh, is already used to changing of the tracheostomy tube, then you can change. But the first should always be changed by the tracheostomy, uh, by the physician as there can be any complication, okay? So, uh, Okay, the first question, first directive should be changed by the physician. It is true. Then the second question is, adequate humidification will keep secretion free from infection. Is it true or false? The second question, adequate humidification will second question, adequate humidification will keep secretion free from infection. True or false? Second question. Okay, the second question is false. Okay, if you give adequate humidification, it will keep the secretion thin. Okay, so the second question is false. That assessment for suctioning should be done every four hourly. Is it true or false? The third question. Third question, is it true or false? Assessment of suctioning should be done every four hourly. The third question. Okay, the third question is false. Assessment of suctioning should be done every two hourly. Okay, then audible noise around the tube. Audible noise around the tube is an indication of a cough, cough leak. Is it true or false? The fourth question. Yes, it is true. If there is audible voice around the tube, okay, it means there is a cough leak. Thank you. They will ask my Thank you, Sudhin Rai, for such amazing sessions. Now we will come to the end. We'll do the discussion session. So now you can ask your queries here. Okay, we will take up the questions. Uh, I have shared a post list and feedback link in the chat box. Hope everyone got the different uh, feedback link. Thank you. Everybody is writing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, post uh, post list and feedback link I have already shared. Uh, now you can ask the queries here. I think it, it was a nice interactive session. So that's why they have no. Okay. Uh, okay, I just want to show this one. So, uh, 
This one is a closed suction catheter, okay? This is for a uh, ET tube. This is for an ET tube, okay? So this is connected to a ET tube. Like this, okay? But if it is a tracheostomy tube, we can also use a closed suction, but this length is smaller. Okay, the length of this suction catheter will be smaller, okay? And also in this ET tube, can you see? There's another uh, yellow suction or yellow tube is there. Can you see here? So one is this uh, pilot balloon. Uh, this is a tube for pilot balloon. Okay, and this is the yellow, okay? This is for subglottic suction, okay? I didn't see the written presentation. I didn't see them. Okay, I'm giving you. I have already given the posters link. Once again, I'll, I'm searching. Okay, I'll give you by the time. If you want to ask any queries, you please unmute yourself and you can ask. Anyone wants to, even if you want to share your experience, you can. If anyone wants to share, you can ask. Uh, uh, those who have submitted the post is please don't write. We will get it from the link. It's very difficult for me to search the link now and the questions. If you have any questions, you can ask. I'm not able to see the questions here, though the, inter uh, the session was very interactive. Everyone was participating during the sessions and, you know, clarifying your queries. So I think because of that, you don't have much questions. I'm trying to put the, I'm trying to search the post test. Okay, next question. Where? question they have mentioned. Yes. Yeah. Okay, how many days uh, can we keep the tracheostomy? Can you explain again now? So uh, actually for the tracheostomy tube or for the tracheostomy? <laughs> You're asking about the tracheostomy tube or the tracheostomy? You can uh, unmute yourself and you can, Olga, you can uh, unmute yourself and you can ask. You're asking about tracheostomy tube or a tracheostomy? If suppose the tracheostomy is done, if it is all you're talking about tracheostomy, so it'll be there, okay, for like until and unless you take out a tracheostomy tube, it will be there only, okay. But if you're talking about tra a tracheostomy tube, so uh, for a tracheostomy tube, maybe we use plastic, we change it every uh, uh, two weeks after every two weeks, okay. But if it is a silicone kind of a tracheostomy tube, we can use it for a long time, okay, like uh, one month, two months. Does it answer your question? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for asking questions also. So what are the signs of air leakage or blockage in the ET2? So what are the signs of air leakage? So when there, there is air leakage, you will see in the ventilator, the tidal volume will be low. Okay, the patient won't get the amount of air that the the tidal volume that is being uh, delivered by the ventilator, the tidal volume will be low. And in case if there is blockage, the tidal volume will be very high, okay? And you will see the patient also, the patient will be very restless if there is any secretion or uh, anything, okay, in the ET tube. And in case of an ET tube also, if there is any leakage, you will hear an audible noise from the, around the mouth, okay? That there is leakage from the uh, ET tube. If they, can you please mute yourself? Okay, so does it answer your question? What is the name? What's it? Can you please, those who are not speaking, can you please mute yourself? I think you got Dina, Dina, I think that answer your question. Can you please mute yourself, those who are not speaking? See, if a patient is prescribed, okay, if a patient is prescribed to give, see, I've only said like the different kind. You can give it directly with the ventilator. You can connect it to the ventilator and also you can be... You can 
connect it to the T-piece or a stoma protector, okay? So these three things can be given oxygen through that. But a patient is able to wean off from the ventilator and a patient can be kept on a T-piece or he can be kept on room air. So that time, uh, he don't need any oxygen, okay? Suppose he's on room air, that time the patient does not need any oxygen. I think you've got your answer. Please move your answer. <laughs> Uh, can you please mute yourself? Uh, another question is asked, what is the solution to use for tracheostomy or tube dressing? This depends from uh, institute to institute. Mainly, we can use a normal saline, okay? or we can use a chlorhex, then a diluted chloroxidin solution also we can use, okay? Any other question? Uh, I think how much deep of tracheostomy suction to be inserted? So uh, I've already said, right, during uh, suctioning, whenever you do a tracheostomy or a ET uh, uh, suction, you have to insert the catheter till the point of resistance, okay? Till it reached the points of resistance. And once you've reached the point of resistance, you have to withdraw it one to two centimeters. After withdrawing one to two centimeters, then you start the suctioning and you have to take out the suction catheter that also in rotatory motion, okay? I think everybody got the pre-test, uh, post-test, pre-test feedback link. I hope everybody has submitted. Uh, can we use a betadine solution for tracheostomy dressing? See, if your institute has said that, okay, you can use, but mainly uh, for bet uh, betadine, it is mostly bactericidal. So that's why we mostly don't use, okay? But you can use, uh, like, in our institute, we have a chlorhexidin. Uh, solution we use that or you can just use normal saline uh same question is asked by charles also applying gut paste with a betadine solution is recommended or not see okay. mostly like just like immediately you have done the uh, the tracheostomy it is a fresh tracheostomy uh tracheostomy which is being done so you have to apply it's the betadine solution or the betadine uh, soak in uh, the gauze soak in betadine but if for later on the patient, uh, you can leave it dry. Gauze piece also is, uh, it's okay. 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 Now what is the position for the um, patients for doing suction in case of tracheostomy patients? Okay. For a patient who can cuff out, okay, you can also pe uh, place a patient in semi flawless position or you can use the supine position also. Uh, I mean, it depends upon your facility. If, uh, See, the, like I've already said like before, right? Mm -hmm. That the if suppose uh, just immediately the tracheostomy is done, okay? And a betadine solution is kept. So you have to keep that only because for the 24 hours, you should not like uh, remove the gauze, right? Any question? Yeah. Last questions we will take up. Like occlusion of carotid artery and need to maintain a finger or two in the T-tubes. I missed this explanation, ma'am. Can you please explain? So whenever... Occlusion of carotid okay. So I've already said that like, why we need one finger or two uh, fingers, one or two fingers in the tracheostomy tie. So why do we need that? Because one is comfort for the patient, Okay, and if you, you have more than two fingers, it means the tracheostomy is too loose, so it might get dislodged or patient, the uh, tracheostomy tube can come out. If it is less or you cannot even insert only one finger also, it means it's too tight. So it can cause skin irritation, discomfort to patient, and also like the main uh, artery which supply to the brain is in the neck, right? The side of the trachea. So what will happen if that time, it'll block the uh, carotid artery to supply blood to the brain, okay, if it is too tight. Okay, and next question is how many hours after change TT dressings? How many hours after change? So we have to change it, I only send every shift, like eight hourly. Okay. Hope Nadindra, you got your answer. Uh, what is the rate of infection in both ET tube and tracheostomy? So the... <laughs> It depends upon how how well you are taking yeah. care of your patients. And mainly the how like how much universal precautions you are taking care in your facility, you, you know, while giving care to your patients. I think. And you're if you're maintaining like suctioning and all, if you're do, doing aseptic technique, 
uh, then you won't have low rate of infection. Okay. And suppose uh, if there is like uh, you're checking the cuff pressure regularly and all, if there's no leakage, no aspiration, there's less infection in both ET and tracheostomy tube. So during su suctioning, do we deflate or inflate the cuff? So during suctioning, we have to inflate the cuff, okay? Because if we deflate the cuff, what will happen? The tube might come up when he cuff out during the suction, okay? How many minutes? How many minutes we can use for suctioning? So I said one first uh, suction you should do for ten seconds, okay? You have to see. It's suppose you cannot say in minutes because like what one, one suction you are doing within ten seconds. And suppose you are seeing the patient is still having secretion, so you can do it again. It depends on the um, amount of sec uh, secretion present on the uh, patient. After tracheostomy procedure, till how many hours we can start our feeding? So immediately after tracheostomy uh, procedures. This depends on the doctor advice. If the doctor advice, like uh, after one, two hours, then you can start the feeding. Okay. You have to observe first for any complication after tracheostomy. If no complication, then we can start the feeding. I hope everybody got the answer. So now I think we are, we'll just, uh, I'll just, I hope everybody has done your post test uh, and then feedback. I'm once again sharing. I think we, I think nicely you have covered all the topic and you have answered all. I think I'm not seeing any questions anymore now. Okay, yes. I hope all of you have understand uh, the topics. You can write down if you have any other queries. Now I'm not seeing any queries here. Okay, thank you for submitting your pre test, post test feedback. Everybody is saying. While deflating the cup, what is the need? What it is needed to check? So, why do we deflate the cup in the first place? So we, and whenever we deflate the cuff, mainly it's like whether we are uh, like for the, for ET tube, so we don't deflate, okay? But if it is a tracheostomy tube, when we deflate the cuff, it means we're allowing the patient to speak, okay? And we're checking like whether we can take off the patient from the tracheostomy tube. These are the things why we deflate the cuff, okay? And suppose like before feeding the patient, uh, you have to inflate again the cuff, okay? I think this much we have covered all. I think uh, we, we have clarified all your queries now. What is the suction pressure? So I've already mentioned before in that slide, it's 80 to 180 mm of water. Suction pressure, okay. So uh, anyway, I'm going to give a PPT also. Those who have missed uh, certain portions, I'm going to give you a PPT, okay? From there also you can uh, further clarify your things. Okay, last questions we are taking. One time while doing a suction, okay, certain type of secretions came out from the tubes. So when patients cough, what PPE needed when doing a suction? Okay. So whenever you do a suctioning, the first and foremost, you always have to wear a mask. Okay, and also like if possible, you can wear a cap and also uh, you have to wear your gloves. And if it is an uh, open suction, so you have to wear a sterile glove. It, is, it has to be a septic technique. But if it is a closed suction, you can wear a clean gloves and do the suctioning. Thank you, Lara. And mask and goggles also you can wear. Yes, gown and face shield also can be used. Especially like if a patient is a COVID positive case, then we have to wear all that. Yeah, Lal Raman has also added the answer. Masks, goggles, gowns, and gloves. Thank you. I think uh, so many questions are still coming. So I've already said before, like if it is a new tracheostomy, you can put a moist one. But usually, like moisture, if you're doing a tracheostomy dressing, if moisture you apply to that area, usually more bacteria and more growth will be there. So you well, dry uh, gauze if you want to cover the tracheostomy. Yes, Suja, I will give you. Betsur and tracheostomy PPT, I will give you. Rest I have already given. Those who have joined late in the uh, group. Like, uh, before uh, finishing this discussion, can I ask something? Uh, this one, can a patient with tracheostomy be discharged from the hospital? Can a patient with a tracheostomy tube be discharged from the hospital? 
Mm, yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 So, what what kind of health education you give to that patient if the patient is discharged from the hospital? So many yeses. Thank you. Still, at the end of the session, also many of you are responding. Most of the time, dressing can we do twice or thrice in a day? Yes, I've already said it once every shift. No, my question is like, okay, maintain hygiene. Then, then what else? Proper care. So, what like trachostomy itself, trachostomy care, yes. Okay, then. So, if a patient is discharged from trachostomy, so you would have a facility to avail, uh, avail this uh, sterile things, right? For suctioning and for, for uh, this uh, trachostomy care, okay? So, you can ad advise the person that he can uh, leave it like that without any dressing also, okay? But it, sh it should be cleaned properly, okay? And also, like for patient, you should avoid uh, going to an area where there is dust, smoke okay this area should be avoided and whenever he go out the trachostomy tube should be covered okay the uh the uh, uh opening of the trachostomy tube should be covered okay so that no dust or any uh irritants will or any insect or anything will go inside this trachostomy tube okay and that one more thing also very important we should always advise for patient not to go swimming a patient with trachostomy tube cannot go for swimming okay and Otherwise, all the daily activities which he can do or he she can do, he can do it at home. But the most important thing is you have to teach them about care, self-care of trachostomy and also suctioning, which is very, very important. And you have to advise them to buy the suction machine, okay? It can be electronic or it, it can be pump system, okay? They, this These things they have to buy. Okay, I don't have also mentioned regular cleaning, but should report for any blockage. Yeah, yes. if any blockage, they should not try to change the trachostomy truck, themselves. They should always come to the hospital to change the tube. They should never try to change it themselves. Okay, many of you have mentioning about the hygiene. Yes, thank you so much. I think we will end the sessions. We have um, now. I think we will end the sessions. We are already over the okay, time. Thank you thank so you much. And so pre-test, post-test link I have already given. Post-test. Again, I'm giving you here. Okay, I hope uh, the uh, session was uh, good. I hope all of you have understand. Thank you so much, everyone.